Using the graphite transfer method, I go ahead and copy over all of the lightest lights and the darkest darks. Not necessarily every line, but every light space and dark space. You can see that on the left side of his face, it's got mostly empty area. That's because that's all going to be essentially black. I start working in the lighter tones, building them up from light to dark until it looks like what I'm drawing. I worked first on the eye because that's what can really characterize the face the most. Then the nose and lips, the ears. At that point I got a little bit frustrated that it wasn't looking like it was more complete and I'd been spending a long time on it, so I went ahead and darkened in all of the black area that I knew for sure was going to be black. It helps the drawing move along a lot more quickly that way. You can also see that I've put some tracing paper between my hand and the top part of the drawing. That's so that I don't smudge the graphite as I'm drawing over it. Coloring in the darkest areas again on the hair, um, leaving those light areas that I can blend in later to make it look a little bit more realistic as far as the hair goes. Notice I'm not drawing every strand of hair. Instead, there's large black areas. Then there's areas that I'm gonna leave relatively light, which I will draw a few strands through, to give the impression that the rest of the hair is made up of strands. You can see that comes together a little bit more on the left side of his face there. And then I'm going to go back through and darken in a couple little features and then start the, the long process of blending. Uh, there's a lot of blending that goes on in this. There's even more after the video is actually over before I show the final product. But that little uh, tortillon, that blending stump, becomes my best friend at this point. It's hard to see the details of it because of the glare off the graphite. I'm going through blending, blending, erasing a little bit where the highlights went too dark. You can see what I'm left with is a fairly realistic portrait. Now at a certain point the portrait might not look like the initial drawing. You might get a little bit further away from it. Don't stop when that happens. Keep on working because you still want to work toward having an understanding of how light and shadow play together. And if you have a more finished drawing, you're going to have more practice than if you give up the moment you think it stops looking like your picture. For instance, there are several things about the photo when I was drawing this that I thought, well, that's not quite right, but I didn't have the time to go back and fix it any more than I had already. Instead of stopping and starting over, I kept going for the practice that it offered. Same thing that you should do. Give it as much time as you can, build up the values very slowly, forgive yourself a lot, use your eraser, use your blending stump and let it develop into whatever it is. This is a pretty complex exercise, so do not hold yourself to a ridiculously high standard. It's all about practice. Again, don't think of it in terms of drawing a face because that can be too overwhelming. Instead, think of it in terms of copying lights and darkness from one photo to your drawing. This could have just as easily been a bicycle or an old barn or a tea kettle. It's the same process of copying over lights and darks.